I am here with the legendary <laughs> Tracy yeah. Morgan, with whom I have known now for at least Whatever. 20 years. Yeah, it's been 20 years. You hosted my very first recording mm -hmm. in 1997, Tracy. Uh, woof. My goodness, you are the host, you're one of the hosts on Rejoice Musical Soul Food, uh, your wife, mother, uh, program director of another station, and you'll talk about that later, and you've, you know, and recently I've been seeing stuff about you, um, hey, come catch me, I'll be speaking here, I'll be preaching here, so thank you for coming on the show, I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Let's talk about the early years, you know, you're a Stella Award winning radio mm -hmm. announcer, um, how did you get involved in communications? Wow, it was a desire of mine since I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. I was about 13 years old, and it was real simple. The news was on, uh, mom was cooking dinner, what have you, and I said, hey, I want to do that. Wow. And I began to pursue it from there. The anchor that was on at the time was Lark McCarthy. Yes. Years mm -hmm. ago, she was on WJLA Channel 7, mm -hmm. and she was only doing weekends at the time. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with television and news, and it took off from there. It became a desire, and I pursued it. So what happened after that? How did you get involved in radio after that? Well, after that, uh, because I was so heavily involved in television and it's what I really, really wanted to do, mm -hmm. um, I'm telling my age, oh, I'm telling <laughs> my age, but Carol Randolph had a show on Channel 9, mm -hmm. and I remember it like it was yesterday. She had a show that featured female radio announcers, mm -hmm. and I went to that particular show. So mm -hmm. I'm in the audience, and I'm just like, okay, this is really cool. But there on the panel was... Candy Shannon. Yeah. Oh, she was with Donnie Simpson back in the yeah, day. Yeah, absolutely. So Candy Shannon, Paul put all of them at WKYS mm -hmm. years ago. I walked up to her and I told her that I was studying at the time radio, uh, television, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. And she said, oh, you have got to try radio. And she invited me to the studio. So I called her and she asked me to come and I went up to WKYS, and she was so smooth on the air. Mm -hmm, I, mean, mm -hmm. I remember. Oh, she was so Her smooth. Her and Donna, Philip. they were doing oh, their thing, yes. yeah. And I said, wow, I like this. Mm -hmm. And she was kind enough, I started doing audition tapes, and she was kind enough to actually critique those tapes. Mm. You know, So she began to critique those tapes, and I said, hey, I want to be a smooth R&B announcer like you, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And she quickly put me in check and let me know, you need to know how to do country radio, wow. gospel, wow. hip hop, jazz, whatever it is, quiet storm, that's what you need to do. So um, I started applying for radio stations mm -hmm. and WYCB. The they anchor, the, the anchor in this city, yes, station. absolutely, absolutely. Forget this, Philip. I was like, I'm not doing nobody's gospel. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so I was like, not feeling it at all. Mm -hmm. I did not want to do gospel radio at that particular time, but God had a plan. He mm -hmm. is so awesome, mm -hmm. and I love telling that story because it was through gospel radio mm -hmm. and the wonderful listeners mm -hmm. who encouraged me through it all that I eventually gave my heart to God, and here we wow. are now. Wow, wow. Yes. So you weren't even saved on gospel radio. I wasn't saved. Shh, don't tell anybody <laughs> that. Don't tell anybody. It's a, it came it's up a, in the church, right. you know, and all that good That's stuff. That's a lot of our but stories, believe I me. I was not saved doing gospel radio mm. back in the early 80s when I first got into it, and I did everything possible to try to wiggle my way out of it, mm -hmm. but it kept pointing me back, and I, and I have to tell this story because I remember getting a phone call from a young lady. I was doing overnights at the time, mm -hmm. and I received this phone call, and she wanted prayer. Mm. And I'm thinking, I'm not saved. I can't pray for you. So I gave her Dr. C.L. Long's number. I Is said, right? call this number uh -huh. because I can't pray with you because I'm not saved. And she said, you're not saved? And she began to pour into me. Is that right? Yes. she. Praise whatever she was dealing with at that time, she began to pour into me. So I just count that as a blessing to this day. And here you are now. Yes. Twenty five years later. Oh gosh. A lot Did of I get it right? That. Let's Did I let's stay right? there. Twenty five. No, you can add on another <laughs> almost ten more years. Later. Oh my goodness. But you know, mind you, I started very very young. Mm -hmm. I started very very young, mm -hmm. and um, and so I'm still young. That's right. Enjoying, That's right. Doing what I do, mm -hmm. but I did start very young. 
Wow, yeah. wow. I don't wow. have that story of, oh, it was so hard to bring into the industry. Mm -hmm. I don't have that story. God has really had his hand on my career down through the years. Who has been some of your mentors down through the years in radio? Down through, I would have to say Candy Shannon. Mm -hmm. I've just watched her. Valerie Coleman, KRN mm -hmm. in San Francisco, way back in the day. She later went on to be with uh, CNN, and mm -hmm. she would allow me as a little girl, you know, 13, 14, 15, I would sneak away and catch the BART train, me and a good friend of mine, the BART is the transit mm -hmm, system mm -hmm. in California, mm -hmm. and I would catch the BART and we would travel over to San Francisco and go to the television studio and hope we wouldn't get in trouble when I got back, mm -hmm. but she would allow us to come and just sit in and meet her and that kind of thing, so those two were really, really uh, inspir inspirational to me down mm -hmm. through the years and just a blessing. You've been instrumental in a lot of uh, artists lives mm -hmm. um, I'm sure major artists but I can only speak for independent artists because I okay. don't know all the others but I know in my life you were instrumental because you were working at the station in um, Temple Hills what was the oh, name of that station? Uh, w, uh, w -W -G -B? Yeah, WWGB. Okay. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, I remember bringing yes. my uh, CD to mm -hmm. you up, upstairs and yeah. And you played I'm on the battlefield and my life was is, is forever changed. But uh mm -hmm. I'm sure you've played, you've sown a lot of seeds, but has there been uh an, an artist that you particularly um is because of you or because of how God used you, that artist has now blossomed to do mm -hmm. other things? I know I'm one of them, but is there mm -hmm. anybody else that you can remember in your mind that my was special mind. to you? You know, it's probably hard to pinpoint one because mm -hmm. I have so many artists come up to me and say, mm -hmm. you know what? Thank you. You did this. Mm -hmm. You did that. You called this person for me, um, and I, I don't. I don't take any credit I for it. That's a tough I question. Yeah. yeah, I don't take any credit for it. But um, it's good to know that you know if you open yourself up and allow yourself to help others, it does right. come back to you. Well, let's get into that. Let's talk about advice to young artists. You're mm -hmm. one of my guests for the IGA conference. You've been mm -hmm. coming for years now. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of artists who uh, out there and they uh, continuously are seeking for the magic bullet, mm -hmm. uh, the magic pill. Right. Uh, can you offer some advice to those who are who are in it right now trying to mm -hmm. make it, whatever they call make it is? Right. Well, yeah. first I will say, do not get discouraged. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we make that mistake by mm -hmm. just getting upset. You're calling PDs. You're trying to get the right mm -hmm. producer. Mm -hmm. You're learning along the way and finding out, oh, I'm doing something wrong. and but don't get discouraged. That's mm. number one. And then secondly, find yourself a good mentor that can help you in that area of you know your recording, your music, and listening mm. to your songwriting, uh, building that relationship. And mm. I think if we do those things, you're off to a pretty good start. Because a lot of time we just get discouraged. Right. Well, mm -hmm. look, just over the weekend, uh, Best Buy announced that uh, they're no longer going yes. to be uh, selling, selling CDs. CDs. Uh, they are phasing it out. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see the music industry and gospel music industry going at this point? Mm -hmm. And what do you think we should do as artists? Um, as artists, I think you should stay the course. Mm -hmm. um, there are so, you know, and I'll speak from a standpoint of radio because mm -hmm. there are so many different outlets. A lot mm -hmm. of times we forget about those college radio stations. Absolutely. We forget about so many of the other outlets to mm -hmm. get our ministry or our music out there. Mm -hmm. And we think it's only one way, which right. has never been true. Right. There, there has always been several ways to get into the door. So I would seek out those other opportunities. And a lot of, you know, I rem my husband and I talk about this a lot. Back in the day, artists you would hear them singing, packing up. They would go hit everywhere. Mm -hmm. They were performed. They will mm -hmm. if there was an audience, they would be there. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's kind of hard getting artists to come out and just do your little old program. I just need you to come sing two songs mm -hmm. for me, sweetie. Mm -hmm. That's all. And it's so hard to get them out. But back in the day, those artists who are who are legends now, they went out they and worked. they worked. You have to work mm -hmm. if you want results. Right, right, and that I mean that we call it the grind. Mm -hmm, exactly. You, you got to be on the grind. Yes. Shout out to your family. Um, you know, I know your family, but let's talk about your husband and your wonderful daughter and things that are going on in your life that you probably didn't know about twenty five years ago. But right, right. Well, you see me glowing. Uh huh. Come on now. You see me Come smiling. On. Come on. <laughs> Um, I have, God has blessed me yeah. with a wonderful family. Mm -hmm. um, they allow me to be the best 
mm. at what I do. Mm -hmm. It's because of them that I'm able to do what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband is very supportive. Many don't know that even on my nationally uh, syndicated show, mm -hmm. he is the producer. He is the one behind wow, wow. everything. He puts the show together. Together. Is that right? He mixes everything. Come on now, Keith. He I didn't does, know all this. Yes, I didn't know he all is this. the producer of the Tracy Morgan show, and a lot of people they don't know that. Uh, mm. I go in and, you know, it's a challenge sometimes because he's <laughs> quite. He's rough on me. Well, you know, I got I got one of those too. You know, he's <laughs> a little rough on me, so I, I have to remind him. Okay, now wait a minute. I'm still it's still my show. It's still your show. It's <laughs> right, right. So, but yeah, he pushes me. Uh, he wants the best for me, mm -hmm. and uh, That's a lot of times. Where I am, he is. That's so um, they are very, very supportive right. of me. And your daughter, she's doing great things in school. She's doing well in school. Mm. Uh, senior this year, so I'm excited about that. Big time. Yeah. Austin Hill? Yeah. Well, no. Not, not Austin Hill? Hill. No. Where's she at right now? Oh, she is not at Austin Hill. She is at uh, Charles Herbert Flowers. Charles Herbert Flowers. Yeah, she's okay. she's in the science and tech program, and she's doing extremely well there. Okay. So um, shout out to them. Yeah, and shout out yes. to... Um, Mike and April Chandler. Yes, from the Joyce Musical, Joyce Soul, Musical Food. Soul Food. Radio Where else do you Network. work? Um, well, I work there Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. I do the midday show. Um, Rejoice Musical Soul Food Radio Network. They have been a blessing. We just came off the Musical Soul right, Food right. Festival. Right. Um, this is the, this is the second one, right? This is the third year. Third year. Third yes, year. Yes, and thousands of people come Isn't out. Another blessing. And, oh my goodness, we had a wonderful time. So I do that, and then I also program um, radio station WBBP in Memphis, mm -hmm. Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, that is the late Bishop G.E. Patterson's radio That's station right. in Memphis, Tennessee, and I do the morning show there mm -hmm. from 6 to 10. So when did you start uh, preaching, speaking, whatever you want to call it, when did you realize that there was something uh, else that God wanted you to I do? When I stopped running. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, I got to stop running. Um, my whole message was, hey, I do radio. I get on the air every day and minister to people, mm -hmm. but that wasn't Absolutely. enough. Absolutely. That wasn't enough. So um, eventually I accepted the call many, many, many years ago now, mm -hmm. and um, we've been going forth ever since. Just started to really right. um, put myself out there, so to speak, and just right. let people know mm -hmm. and share that, yes, that is a part of me. That is something that I do, so I start mm -hmm. talking about you know, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be there. When normally mm -hmm. I would just do, go and do it mm -hmm. and just keep talking about radio. So mm -hmm. now from time to time I will say, yes, I'm going to be ministering here. I'm going to be doing that. Now we know. Yeah. <laughs> now you're <fighting>. Evangelist <laughs> Tracy Morgan. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Last question. Since we're on that topic and okay. we'll end with this, how do you now prepare to preach? Prayer, a lot of prayer, mm -hmm. fasting. We don't like to fast anymore. Oh, my, my, my. But I won't get into that. <laughs> um, but prayer, mm. um, a lot of fasting, a lot of seeking God and hearing from God and just being led by the Spirit. You have a mentor in, in, um, in a ministry I, right I now? I do. I do. And I love her dearly, Pastor Jean Terry. Um, she's at Revival Center. Um, very seasoned woman of God, mm -hmm. and she really, really, really ministers and um, just really been able to pour into my life down through the years mm -hmm. in terms of that mentor for ministry. She's been that person that mm -hmm. I could actually go to for help, and she's she's helped me with structure. She, I mean, whatever right, I need, right. she helped me with people and dealing with people. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just she's really been a blessing to me. She she really has. Right. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen. The, uh, the, 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 the preacher, the radio host, wife, <laughs> mother, oh, uh, did I miss anything? <laughs> Program director, Tracy Morgan, thank you so much. Thank this you has for been a pleasure. Yes. Uh, down through the years, you know, you've been a great friend. And artist, she is a great, um, a great resource in your ministry. Um, you can always reach out to her, and she'll do her best to respond back to you. For more information on how to become a guest on Real Talk with Philip Carter or for general inquiries, please email us at realtalkwithphilipcarter at yahoo.com. Tune in next Monday for another edition of Real Talk with Philip Carter.